Sorry, we had to transfer around Susie's show. Um, obviously, very much uh, in connection with the um, project at the Serpentine Gallery, which she should, she's going to talk about. Um, and um, so Susie's been touring with us for, I think, over 15 years. Yeah, since 2004. Yes, exactly. Mm. Um, and always quite sort of elaborate projects, as you probably know if you're aware of, um, if you know her work. But um, don't, don't want to say too much now. I'll pass over to um, Susie in just a second, but I hope you enjoy. And if you have any other questions after the talk, feel free to ask um, either Susie herself or if you want to talk to any of us, and it's Jessica and my colleague. Please do. Thanks, Nina. Uh, so, then, come in. Uh, so, um, I might sure where to start. So, basically, the first uh, this is this is the room for survival F, and through the portal is the room for the estate history, which you probably know. Um, I know. And then, uh, so this survival F was the first project which I started in 2016, um, and. Uh, uh, Around the middle of 2016, uh, I kind of I finished a previous project, HFT the Gardener, and I was kind of. Uh, what usually happens when I finish a large project is I decide that I'm not going to make any more art and I'm going to write a novel, and uh, it seems to happen roughly every three years. Um, and then uh, so, on that third year, I start writing a novel, which then fails. Um, but uh, and but in this case. Uh, I started a novel which turned into Survivor F because uh, I was doing a lot of diagrams to plan out the plot of the novel and suddenly one of them became I think one of these, the first one maybe, so it eventually turned into something like this. Uh, that wasn't actually anything to do with the plot of the novel but it morphed um, into, into this which then, uh, uh, and the, in, in a way the uh, actual subject matter is totally different, but somehow the one thing led to the other with a kind of blurry bit in the middle. There was um, a character in the novel who uh, invented a, an alter ego who was an algorithm. And uh, she gave like a voice to this algorithm. And so the one bit that's carried over here is actually the voice of the algorithm in that box. Uh, it's an algorithm that speaks and tells you about its life. Um, and. Uh, so, but in terms of this Survivor of Project, uh, I, was, I was trying to imagine uh, a completely hypothetical uh, time and space, uh, probably in the future, where possibly uh, humanity no longer existed, um, where possibly there was possibly one human survivor who somehow transmitted all of this back to us, um, but then possibly it wasn't human, possibly it was machine intelligence. And uh, so there's, uh, uh, I, well, I wrote a lot for this, not in terms of this novel, but I was writing a lot of phrases and things. And a lot of those phrases which were trying to describe that other reality went into these uh, watercolors. And these were the first things um, that I made. Uh, I started off making these, um, and what happened while I was making these is that I realized that even though I completely rejected the idea of oil painting since the 90s, uh, uh, the only way to really fully um, expand this project visually was through painting again. Uh, and so that was quite a big uh, decision because I had really rejected oil painting for a hell of a lot of reasons which uh, you may or may not know about. They're probably the same reasons that most people don't make oil paintings who maybe once did or who are ideologically, you find them ideologically problematic. Um, but uh, I thought, well, who cares? I'm gonna, I really want to, to visualize these things in that way and that's what I had to do. Uh, so then I thought, well, am I going to do large ones? So like using the 80s, I used to do hundreds of large oil paintings. And uh, I've never been more glad than to leave them behind, to be honest. Um, but here's this blinking storage problem again, you yeah. um, know. And, and so, uh, 
I think, so then, uh, what happened? Normally, I do a large project like this, and it lasts three years, and then I come to the end, go through this process, start a new one. Um, but in the, in the case of Survivor F, uh, about halfway through, the Serpentine approached me and asked me, would I um, do a commission? Uh, and we had various meetings, and it was like, I thought it was just going to be like a small small thing. I would just do a very small project which would be online and it would be something like lots of other small things I do which would just happen alongside a big project. But they got more and more excited about developing it into a big project and I realised that they, that's what they actually wanted at one of my big projects, which seemed like that didn't really seem appropriate for a digital, digital commission. But then the more I got to know this team there, the more... Uh, we all went into some other zone and it was like seemed a foregone conclusion that that's what I was going to do and we started talking about um, we started talking about uh, black holes and theories around black holes because I'd just been at CERN um, and so uh, I was yeah about a year and a half ago I got this CERN award which meant I could go on a residency there for, for various periods of time and um, uh, I'd had this idea, uh, which was based on this um, a theory I'd had about five years ago after I'd seen a TV documentary about um, the holographic universe thing, uh, which was, which had explained it in, well, I kind of understood it as something which uh, was, had come out of black hole theory, where around a black hole is the event horizon, and so uh, apparently any three-dimensional larger dimensional object that enters a black hole leaves a two-dimensional equivalent of itself on the event horizon. So that sets up a holographic uh, relationship um, uh, interdimensionally and so that everything exists, everything uh, in, possibly in the universe also exists in a two-dimensional space. Um, now, so uh, when uh, I was asked to discern the thing, uh, I had this idea to make a film, um, which would be uh, uh, testing out my, well I haven't actually explained the theory, the theory was that <laughs> all of our history was only ever an attempt to describe that holographic reality. And at CERN I, I had the idea um, uh, to, uh, through a video, to fast forward the whole of our history in a loop like the, in the same way that the Large Hadron Collider at CERN accelerates particles to test um, its theories, I wanted to accelerate the whole of our history to test my theory. And, and when you come to the end of the video, it goes around in a loop. So uh, uh, at CERN, uh, I was able to interview these, uh, these uh, leading you know, the theoretical physicists uh, about this black hole theory, about this holographic universe theory. Um, and uh, I recorded them and they, they tried to explain how this two-dimensional data exists uh, on a boundary, which is in some infinite part of space, which you can never quite reach to test it out. And it's incredibly theoretical and unprovable to a large extent. Um, but uh, one of them said, if, uh, for example, our universe was actually inside a black hole itself, then the event horizon of the black hole that our universe had come through um, would possibly be reachable and we possibly would be able to find a two-dimensional version of ourselves and everything we know on this border boundary. Um, so um, uh, then I asked them about my theory. I gradually led them up to my theory about our history uh, and they more or less agreed with me that this theory was probably quite reasonable. So I'm glad I recorded that as well and uh, I used that as a soundtrack of, of my video where I accelerated like about 24,000 images from our history chronologically to this, this super fast loop. Uh, now, so when I was meeting up with the seven time people again, uh, I was telling them all about this and they were getting very, very excited about all of those things and they were also thinking about maybe going to CERN and setting up some, some uh, projects of their own, some uh, collaborations of their own. Um, and, uh, and, and so it was, it was during that time which was one and a half years into this, that uh, I had this idea to do these portals uh, uh, as a digital commission to do these portals as, uh, maybe we should go here now, <laughs> as uh, a standard thing. Uh, 
the other room. Some more went into the office. Oh. It's all right, he's come back. Um, no, it's all right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I had the idea, I did these, I did these um, actually originally on Photoshop, and I had them with a sky background. And my original idea for Seven Time was that I would, um, uh, I would have these portals online, and that anyone could download them. I make, would make them to fit um, all sizes of computers and iPhones and phones and everything. And that the people would be able to download them and use them as their background image so that they would be like an interface between you know, your everyday reality sitting behind your screen and where you go when you go into computer space, whether it's just, um, whether it's just uh, you know, like into the code of whatever you're doing on your computer or whether it's into the internet or you know, actually soon the interplanetary internet, for example. So these things would, these things with, the te with a black hole in the middle with the event horizon and a, like a kind of poetic text around the side would be like an uh, interface of, your, of, of the space between those two realities for people who downloaded them, having them on their desktop image. So, um, so that was the starting point. And then um, there was this idea that I that developed this into a larger project. And so about 10 minutes later, I started the Escapist comic strip. I was sitting under a tree somewhere, and episode one just arrived in my notebook. And, and then every day for a few months, uh, or however long, um, every other day, I, I just uh, went to these different, different trees on Hampstead Heath, and, um, and uh, another episode would come to me. Uh, and so, <laughs> so this kind of turned into a slightly channeling project because um, I'd had this idea for someone called the Escapist for a while, uh, but I hadn't, he hadn't materialized. Um, and somehow he materialized through these portals. I, I'm not really sure how that happened. Um, and then obviously then I needed to start making paintings to elaborate on, on this whole new space. So I guess in terms of who this Escapist is, it's like a non-specific interplanetary entity who may live inside a black hole, may not. Sometimes he seems like he lives inside a black hole. Sometimes he's in a display in a vitrine inside the Museum of Black Hole Space Time, um, from which he seems to have escaped. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and so uh, what, uh, so I kind of like abandoned Survivor F for a bit, and then I kept going back to it and doing more paintings for it, coming back to the escapist. And then this really weird thing happened, which is that I did this painting of the uh, Museum of Black Hole Space Time, and I, real, I realized, like, I'm not sure, quite sure what part of my brain realized, but it was clear to me that uh, that was a portal between the two projects, that inside that museum, there was like a portal that led back to Survivor F, and that these projects, because I'd been doing them simultaneously, which was unusual for me, obviously had overlapped. And I couldn't have two separate bits of my brain it, that were working independently, um, that they kind of yeah, connected. And so hence this portal, uh, which divides the, the two bodies of work. Um, uh, and what you've got over here is part of this escape because all this uh, investigations at CERN, which had been uh, really very exciting because I found that these theoretical physicists were like these complete free thinkers who just could just had these brains to think outside every single box you'd ever imagine um, and uh, that's how I like to be and so I, I just loved it there. I thought it might be like a nightmare but actually it was amazing um, and so uh, one of them, my favorite one, this guy Wolfgang who, who uh, was the most outside the box. For example, um, when we were chatting and he said to me, uh, hold on, he said, he took my pencil and he said, let me just draw you. So for example, this is particle physics and he did these arrows and then he did uh, another circle to the side and then he said, uh, and this is the brain and then he did another circle in the triangle and he said, and this is consciousness. And I said, but you're a particle physicist, you're not supposed to believe in consciousness. Everything's supposed to boil down to particle physics. That's what your PhD student told me. He said, that's rubbish. Anyway, and, and then he started talking about extraterrestrials. And of course, so that was very exciting. And I thought, well, I said, so they exist? Yeah, of course they exist, he said, because in all, it's about probability. There's billions and billions of planets in, you know, out there. And 
it would be ridiculous if they didn't exist. So I said, well, how do you fancy drawing me one of them? Because we got all the paints out. I draw my, they were doing all these um, really nice watercolors of the holographic universe principle for me, for my other thing, for my video. Um, and so uh, this time we're going, uh, if you just did this, just like this, just an orange one with a black um, triangle. Um, and, uh, and so, uh, as a result of that, uh, I uh, was I asked a, a few other people. While on my first, well, I didn't know my, this was my second trip there. Um, there's another guy there who was doing the interview with me in the Serpent Time, Michael Dosa, who's head of antimatter, and I and uh, he's an experimentalist, not a physicist, and he's a bit hostile to some of the theoretical ideas because they're just so abstract. Um, and uh, but. And he said, yeah, I'll do one of these extraterrestrial things. So he's done a chronology, like a timeline of extraterrestrial life forms from before the Big Bang until the, uh, I think it's, what is it, 7 billion years or whatever in the future. Um, and, and so so I finished my previous project, the video, and I, uh, so I asked, can I come back again? Um, and I went back um, in March, and I lined up as many um, of the scientists as possible to get them to do these extraterrestrial Things um, which they were more than happy to do. They all all were uh, totally you know into it. Uh, so I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to include that in this project because the escapist is probably an extraterrestrial, and and then this is like kind of it's almost like where art and science meet at this point of the imagination. So I thought it'd be really useful to bring in this actual quite concrete example of what these people in CERN are thinking. Um, which they wouldn't normally expose, I suppose. They're probably mm. not asked on a daily basis. Not to generally, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> probably not. They, most of them probably wouldn't bring it up, you know. Um, but they do bring up a lot of um, amazing things, like once they, the ones that start talking about dark matter, for example. You know, they've had like maybe 20 or 30 or 40 years doing the same experiment in some cases where. They 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 had all that time for their enormous brains to think up all kinds of things, mm. um, and they <coughs> they have, mm. <laughs> and sometimes they tell you what they are. You know. mm -hmm. So yeah, I think uh, I'm not sure what else I can say off the top of my head, but if you've got any questions, yes, and um, if you well, yes, I'm following Susie around like a sort of fly here because I am recording so just just so you know but um shall we open it up to the floor yeah um after that introduction from Susie thank you for that um does anyone have any questions about the body of work okay. you go. can you say something about your mother's paintings, are they actually your mother's paintings? Oh, yes, yes, yes. No, I left them out because that room is around the corner. So, well, and also I want to get that iPad for the yeah. thing. Yeah. So, the thing that I ended up doing with the Serpentine, apart from the book, they did a book of both these projects, um, is this uh, thing in augmented reality. And it's only this morning where I realised how my mother unwittingly had been influenced by me. Um, <laughs> because when we were, we were going to all go on holiday um, in July, and uh, I said I've got to do a lot of work uh, when I, I've got this, all this, this book deadline. And I said, and my mum's nice to me, and I said, you are going to have to work as well, because um, otherwise I'm going to feel really guilty. And uh, I had been like bullying her into doing paintings since, uh, since my father died, actually, about 2012. I'm trying to get her to do something else, you know, because um, she'd been his secretary all his life and they'd um, only recently retired. He retired at 95 and lived another five years. But, so I didn't really, you know, I, I, th I thought, you know, she had such potential, but she didn't really have the chance to explore it. Um, so she had been doing some paintings, but mostly still life. So this summer, beginning of the summer, uh, she said to me, well, Susie, I've, um, I know what I'm going to do. Yeah. And I said, you do? He said, yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, well, what is it? And she said, well, I'm going to paint black holes. I went, really? I wonder where you got that idea from. Okay. <laughs> and she said, oh, yeah, no, no. Um, uh, I, I saw them on TV. I saw a picture on TV. Um, and uh, TV, I said, well, the computer. I said, do you, do you want me to print it out for you? Like, so you can 
copy it. No, no, I saw it on TV. You can't, you know, I said, well, you can't print it out from TV, so no. Um, and uh, she said, oh, no, I'm going to do it from my memory. I went, oh, how conceptual of you, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and then, uh, so, so lo and behold, she, you know, she, uh, we all went away, and she, just one after another, she did these 12 paintings. And mm -hmm. I remember the first one was like a black hole at night. I went, okay, you know. And then the next one was, I said, what's that green background? She said, that's black hole over China. And, right, okay. And then, and then she went on and on. Uh, one over Los Angeles, one over um, Oklahoma, you know. Um, and uh, it was only this morning I woke up and I thought, hold on a minute. I told her about my augmented reality thing before the summer and that, I, that there would be um, these black hole portals appearing in the sky over the earth. And I thought, hold on, because there's something really weirdly separate about these hair black holes and, and all of this, because this is like in an imaginary space. There is no, um, you know, like planet earth, there is no ground level horizon, there's no earthly locations in this work. The only place that there's earthly locations is in her work and in this app. Because when you get the portals, they have got the real world, so-called real world, and the portals in the same go. And I thought, my God, and this is, this is the connection. Her paintings are the, uh, like a connection between this app and the whole, like she's doing this, version of the app, but in painting. God. Anyway, so I'm told it. I haven't been able to tell it. Way ahead uh, of you. Huh? Way ahead of you. Yes, exactly. Yes. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I don't know if you, any of you had a chance to go on this thing. So the idea is, well, that means you click and you have to go outside and you, and you click on these and that's where you get the download things. And then, then did you see that? The, 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 the hymn that from there goes by the, the museum. Oh, I can't get it there. I can only stand here and see it. Um, and then when you click on, when you click on, uh, yeah, I'll go there. So I'm going to see this actually with my fingers in the background. Mm -hmm. um, so when you click on this, uh, you go to the second universe where. There should be curved in, but I don't know why it's not. There should be outer space coming out now. I think there's a. Oh, yeah, here we go. We just put them on. And so we're still in the room, but we've got this outer space. And then when you put on these, uh, you, you should um, basically enter. Uh, so it's like, an, uh, it's like you've gone into this museum, and these are things are supposed to exist. It's going to take a while to learn. I think the Wi Fi is now. Not the ones. <laughs> <laughs> you can actually enter into like a library of all the all the paintings. If you go to that one, if you, you know, that's my back button. So this you know, this is my one. So and then this is like the third one. Which, you, know, you see all of those. Um, let's see if we get one of these right. Have it, has anyone? Basically, if you do want to tr give it a try on your iPhone or or desktop, I think it works on as well, um, or like iPad. Desktop, you don't get the camera view, you just get... Um, um, you can either go on our website and the exhibition page and there is a link there, or um, is it on the Serpentine website as well? Yeah. Um, and you can get the link there and follow through to experience the app. Oh, here we are. You've got to get the circle lined up and you've got to you know, zoom in before it'll come up. So anyway, when, when this image comes up, you basically have to scroll sideways and you get all the ones in that group. There, that's, this is the, the yeah. Mm -hmm. Can chase the Museum of Black Hole Space Time hmm? to your heart's content. Yeah, you can chase it back and forth to the two universes. <laughs> so it's a bit slow. Um, oh, yeah, here we are. There they are. There. So it's just coming, loading slowly. So, uh, but basically, in the second universe, all the five icons lead to all the different bodies of work, and you can 
go through them in the museum and then come back out of the museum and then take the museum again back to the other universe and download the portals. And do so, you feel like the project is now finished? Or are you going back to writing a novel now? Or no, no, because the thing is, now I'm making presents for people. So I've done some new ones, which I really <laughs> like, which I'm going to get you to swap for some of these. <laughs> I'm really annoying your database. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, no, I've, no, I haven't decided what, what well, even the novel is, is a nightmare idea right now. Uh, I just want a, a bit of a nap, actually. <laughs> I want to get this next freeze week over with, and then I've got to teach in Amsterdam the week after. And, uh, and then uh, I may have a more normal life for a few weeks or something. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Can, can do you visualise what's inside the museum of black hole space time? Well, it's in one of the, the comics. Uh, uh, it's only very vague. Uh, this is this one is inside it. Uh, um, oh, there's another one somewhere. There's one with the maybe it's. That's the only one I can try right now. Uh, do I visualise it? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid you haven't come into the compass without expecting it, which is oh, wonderful. But I don't know your work previously. If you worked with comics before. No. Yeah, it's not really about comics, it's about, you know. I, I, I like the I like thing. I wanted to ask a more general question about your work, uh, which I love, and, and one of the reasons is because it's not a clearly utopian or dystopian, it's much more complex and interesting than that. And I was just mm. wondering, but there are, it's very critical though, um, and quite deep, so I was wondering what, which, is there, uh, do you lean towards one way or the other? Or no, I think it depends on the time of day. Well, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? <laughs> yeah, no, I, no. Um, I try to avoid dystopia too much because it seems like too easy. What excites me about this work is yeah. that, that it pushes forward this kind of more future thinking, very critical as is the voice. It's very humorous and critical as well about yeah. the relation between humans and machines, but it's always there's other layers. That it's, it's not as simple as it. I mean, I did the Hexen 2.0 project, which was a little slightly didactic in a way because I was so pissed off about the um, National Security Agency. Uh, and uh, yeah, that was uh, pre Snowden yeah. outburst of mine, really. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I'm not really angry anymore. I'm, I'm just sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Again, it was there's two, it is like a novel. Your work is, is, is very much like a novel many times because there's so many mm. characters, there's characters, there's yeah. characters. It's difficult to just wanted to know if you were positive or negative about the, the future to come. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I don't think in binary, so it's really hard yeah. uh, to say what I think uh, because. The future might not be nice for us, but it might be nice for something else, like That's right, yeah. oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> Get rid of us, yeah. Bring it. Yeah. Or, you know, all these extraterrestrials, you know. They might enjoy this planet when it's really filthy, you know. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, when we die, then something else might happen. We just still don't know. There's so many things we don't know. You really can't stop, can you? Oh, guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, um, so this is this is a bigger question, maybe. Um, I guess the biggest the biggest version of it is what um, is what do you think thoughts are, and then the, the smaller version of it, I suppose, is when you're making experientially, does it feel more like something that is? This is also a binary, but. Something that's coming from you, or do you feel more like you're channeling something or receiving something? Uh, well, I think that, um, uh, with this project, it's completely, totally channeled. I wouldn't credit myself in the least. <laughs> <laughs>
Do you credit the guys at CERN? No, 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 they're channeling their stuff as well. Okay. <laughs> well, they don't get it in a book because it hasn't already been written, you know. I mean, it's like it's coming from everything. Like everything's like there. You know. mm. I just have to tune in. <laughs> Sounding like a hippie now. <laughs> Did you have a question? Oh, I was wondering because they, you said that they talked about consciousness, and I was wondering what the guys at Sun thought about uh, after death, if they mentioned that. Oh, no, I didn't bring that up. No, I don't think they would have necessarily gone there, but, but at the same time, uh, they don't close their mind to anything because that's how you get these ideas. <laughs>